Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Claudette Colbert, Ray Milland, and Brian Ahern in Skylark. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Once upon a time, a young actress asked me how she could learn more about acting. I told her to see every picture Claudette Colbert made. So whether Claudette knows it or not, she's running a dramatic school on the side for some time. Tonight, she co-stars with Ray Milland and Brian Ahern. Ray has spent a good part of the last year working in my picture, Reap the Wild Wind. Perhaps it's natural for a producer to be proud of his own stars. So I let his performance speak for itself. And you all know what to expect from Brian Ahern after his fine work here in the past. These three stars teamed in Skylark at Paramount, and it's their first appearance here together. The play which brings them together was written by Samson Rafelson and had a long run on Broadway before it became a picture. Skylark is the story of a woman with a fight on her hands, a fight to keep her husband. But the situation which threatens her home is no ordinary triangle, and the way it works out received the approval of both motion picture and Broadway theater audiences. It's a very modern story about a very modern woman, the clear thinking, smart dressing, Lux toilet soap type of woman. There are many like her in this broad land, and today they're all facing a challenge. Changes are taking place that give American women far larger and more important responsibilities in the economic scheme of things. Many of them will be doing men's work and looking very glamorous at it, too. American women are working hard, but they'll work harder in the months to come, doing all kinds of things, knitting and learning first aid, of course, and even helping to make airplanes. But American women look lovely at any kind of job, at home, in an office, or a defense plant. And Lux Toilet Soap has always helped them do it. It's beauty's own first aid. Now for a skylock, as the curtain rises for the first act, starring Claudette Colbert as Lydia Kenyon, Ray Milland as Tony, and Brian Ahern as Jim Blake. If Mrs. Tony Kenyon hadn't dropped into a certain jewelry store that afternoon, the trouble would never have started. If Mr. Kenyon's best friend hadn't wandered into the same store at the same time, there might never have been a mention of divorce. Anyway, that's the way it happened. Here's the jewelry store, here's the clerk, and here's the best friend. And there's Mrs. Tony Kenyon at the other end of the counter, out of sight, but not out of earshot. Can I be of service, sir? I've only got two minutes, buddy, and I have to get a gift quick for a pal of mine. Uh, something for his wife. If you just step this way, please. He almost forgot his wedding anniversary. Caught up with him again, and he's going to be tied up all day. He told me he had an account here. His name is Tony Kenyon. I've got to scare up some sort of a bangle for him. Uh, these diamond clips are very popular. Okay, pick one out. Oh, I shouldn't like the responsibility. Well, okay. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. This one. How much? Twenty-one hundred dollars. Twenty-one hundred smackaroos? Okay, what am I worried about? It's his dough. Wouldn't you like it engraved, sir? Oh, yes, yes. Let's see. Um, how about uh, happy fifth anniversary? You think so, sir? No, no, you're right. Why be reminded of it every time you wear it? What about to my beloved wife? No, no, he's probably saving that one for a tombstone. How about to uh, Lydia with love, Tony? Well, that's pretty simple. Quite refined. Does it say enough? Doesn't it say everything? Oh, well, yes. What more can you say to a wife after five years on the back of a clip? Okay, have it ready by five o'clock. Yes, sir. I'll pick it up on my way to his house. Don't forget the inscription. Oh, no, sir. Uh, yes, madam. Can I be of service, madam? Yes, please. I'd like to see my gift. Uh, I beg your pardon? That diamond clip you just sold. You see, I'm Mrs. Kenyon. Mrs. Ken... Oh, dear. Let's see it. Oh, it's lovely, but much too expensive. Uh, madam, 
I'm sorry if anything I said offended you. No, 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 but let this be our secret, hmm? Oh, of course, madam. Now, you just put this clip away and show me some other doodads. And something a little more reasonable, please. Theodore, is that Mr. Kenyon? I believe it is, madam. Oh, here, Theodore, quick, before he comes in, where can I put this? What is it, madam? It's an anniversary gift, an album. I, I want to put it somewhere so he can pick it up accidentally. Perhaps on the evening paper, madam. He always goes straight for the papers. Oh, you've noticed that too, have you? Well, madam, you see, Never I... mind, Theodore. It's a good suggestion. Put it right on top of the paper. Yes, madam. Hello. In the living room, darling. Evening, darling. Hello. Well, let's see you. Yeah, more beautiful than ever. <laughs> but how does it feel to be married to a mug like me for five years? Oh, I think I'm going to like it. Oh, don't let me rush you, babe. Just take your time. Ah, oh, darling. Say, you look tired. Uh, I am. I finally got that new Vantine campaign lined up. Means an extra million in advertising to the firm. Well, that's wonderful. Here, darling, won't you sit down? But I wish I had a better slogan for his cockeyed dog food, though. I had to get him to okay the deal tonight. Well, that's what parties are for, aren't they? Oh, darling, please. You know, when you're a kid, you go to parties for ice cream. When you're a young girl, you go to play post office. But when you've been married five years, well, you have to close the deal. Well, I'm sorry about tonight, really, darling. I know you are. That's why I put up with it. I wonder where the evening paper is, hmm? You know, this Van Tyne's a funny duck, but I think we can work the deal if we can handle Myrtle Van Tyne. You know what she wears under her skirts, don't you? Yep, her husband's pants. All right. Say, uh, how have you been getting along with Myrtle lately? Oh, so-so. She unbends once in a while and calls me dearie. You know, I remember the last time she was at the house, she was sitting there, and Mr. Van Tyne was sitting right there. What they talk about, do you remember? Uh, word for word? Well, sitting right there, Mr. Van Tyne... Look, darling, I don't care where he sat, just what he said, that's all. Well, he said, my dear Mrs. Kenyon, you have a wonderful cook. And then he burped. Uh-huh. Well, that may mean a lot. Uh-oh, there's the paper. Oh, now look out, darling. What's the matter? Uh, I was afraid you were going to knock something off the table there. Oh, don't be silly. You mind if I take a look at this? We're running full-page ads today. Now, it's very interesting, I'm sure. The best we've had, I guess. Mm-hmm, not bad. Nice cut, that one. Darling. Uh-huh, what? Darling, wouldn't it be nice to sort of have an album history of our marriage? You know, old snapshots and letters and souvenirs. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You haven't heard a word I said. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So a hippopotamus walked in and sat right on my knee. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Suddenly, I found myself with a ball in my arms. We were using the old T formation. It was a quick opening play through tackle. My interference was mousetrapped. I flashed around end, gave the secondary my hips. The safety man leered and straight-armed me. Boy, I straight-armed him right back. Whee! The crowd screamed. I sprinted across the last white line. Hooray! Touchdown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, what's the use? Look, Tony, it's an album. Hmm? An album. Where? Well, right here under your nose. Come on, let's take a look at it. Hmm? See, it's got pictures and everything. There's one of me. <laughs> Say, you were pretty cute then. Well, what's the matter with me now? Not a thing. Hey, what's that? <laughs> A Fifth Avenue bus, vintage five years ago. Just a bus? Perhaps you don't recall, darling, but we picked each other up on the top of a bus. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I keep forgetting it was a case of love at first sight. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like this? What is it? A valentine. Where in the world did you get that? From your own trembling hand. Oh, look, and this letter, remember? Uh, dear Mr. Kenyon, we regret that we are compelled to dispense with your services as of today. December 22nd. Swell Christmas present, wasn't it? Mm, terrific. But you know, in some ways, it was one of the loveliest Christmases I've ever had. What, with me out of a job, thoroughly licked, not a dollar in the house, practically weeping on your bosom? I loved it. Oh, now, look, if you really want to laugh, how would you like to read some of your old love letters? Are they that funny? Tony, they're corny but beautiful. Well, let's see. They get mm. better further down. Yeah. My angel of this earthly paradise. That's a forgery! <laughs> Uh-oh. That must be George. George? What's he doing here so early? Now, uh, look, darling, I've got a little business to talk over with him. Why don't you go upstairs and get dressed, No, huh? no, there's plenty of time. Yes, but you see, George now, and darling, I... Now, darling, I won't oh, be in the way. Nevertheless, darling, I Can wish you... the living room, sir. Well, thanks. Hello, Tony. Oh, hello, hello, uh -huh. George. <laughs> well, I got it all right. Here we are. <clears throat> yes. Here, it's going to cost you 2,100 smacks... Uh, George, uh, did you see O'Reilly about those sketches? Oh, who? O'Reilly. 
Hey, what are you talking about? Here, take this thing. Hello, George. Oh, hello, Lydia. Oh, oh, oh hello, Lydia. Hello, George. I, 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 I didn't see you. Uh, what's in that little package, George? Oh, that, uh, that uh, it's, it's, it's some sketches from O'Brien. Give it to me. Yeah, darling, it's your present. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. What is it? Well, why don't you open it? No, I want you to tell me. Well, it's a... Uh, it's a... <laughs> it's a diamond clip. Well, how do you know, George? Well, you see, I, I showed it to him at the office. Yeah. Oh. oh, gee, it's beautiful. I just dropped it by to have the engraving job done. Mm-hmm. Were you clever in the inscription, darling? Well, in a way. Oh, I wouldn't... I wouldn't say clever, Tony. Oh, wouldn't you? No, it was simple, I thought. Uh, to Lydia with love, Tony. Well, I didn't think it was the place to be clever, though. Ah. Hmm, it sounds like a bracelet. No, no, sweet, it's a diamond clip. <laughs> Women's intuition, as usual, 100% wrong. Oh, <laughs> go on, open it. All right. Oh, why, it is a bracelet. Huh? What? Oh, it's lovely. Oh, and the inscription's very clever, Tony. Yeah? What's it say? Tony versus Lydia fights every Friday night. <laughs> And this is my anniversary present, the bracelet. Do you like it, Mrs. Van Tyne? Mm, it's very nice, my dear, in a small way. Oh, I think it's small in a nice way, Mrs. Van Tyne. Well, on our second anniversary, Mr. Van Tyne gave me bracelets practically to the elbow. Really? Yes. <laughs> well, perhaps when Mr. Kenyon's as old as Mr. Van Tyne, I'll have more. <laughs> Where is Mr. Kenyon? I haven't seen him. Oh, he'll be right down. Oh, by the way, did he tell you that you're going to join us in Palm Beach for your vacation? Palm Beach? Yes. No, I, I guess it must have slipped his mind. Will you excuse me? I'll find out what's holding him up. Tony! Coming. You'd better get downstairs. The Emperor and Empress are here. Mr. and Mrs. Van Tyne? You have uttered their names. Listen, Tony, why didn't you tell me you'd accepted Van Tyne's again for Palm Beach? Slipped my mind, I guess. That's what I said. To whom? Myrtle. Oh, well, you know Myrtle. Oh, by heart. She was Miss Coney Island, then Miss 42nd Street, then Miss America, and now she's Mrs. Van Tyne with a Park Avenue accent. <clears throat> uh, darling, you know, she's uh, mentioned it several times lately. I think she wants us to give her our cook. I know she does. She's hinted to me about it. Well, what did you do? Oh, I parried her rather neatly, I thought. You parried her? Just what do you mean? Well, I made it very clear to her that this is a free country. The slaves were liberated by Abraham Lincoln in 1865, but I did it with the utmost finesse. Lydia, you're not very bright. Oh, well, what do you want me to do? Get down on my knees, wrap up my cook, and have her delivered to the Van Tyne's house with, with an apple in her mouth? This is no time to be losing your temper. Don't you realize that one, Van Tyne's dog food is my biggest account? And two, it means an extra million in advertising which I may get tonight. One, three years ago when we wanted to spend our vacation on the island, we had to go to Palm Beach because that's where Myrtle wanted to go. But we got this house as a result, didn't we? And half a million dollars more in advertising. Yes, we got the house all right. Somewhere along the line, I lost you. Oh, you don't like the house. I love it. Then why do you want to start a fight the night of our fifth anniversary? Yeah, I, I'm willing to drop the whole subject right now. All right, that's dropped. Good, it's dropped. But the cook stays here. Have you tried this ham yet, Mr. Van Dyne? It's just wonderful. Well, that's not strange in the Kenyon, man. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Kenyon, I've been coveting and coveting your cook. Really? Yes, I've often said to Poochie, that's Mr. Van Dyne. That's what I thought. I've often said that the cuisine at the Kenyons is so much better than poor little me is able to provide. Oh, you flatter me, Mrs. Van Tyne. Uh, darling, uh, why keep the secret any longer? We might as well tell them right now. Tell them what? You remember, darling. No, I don't. Oh, yes, you do. Well, why don't you tell them, then? All right, I will. Uh, we remembered how much you enjoyed Maddie's cooking, so Lydia said to me, she said, Darling, why not give Mrs. Van Tyne if she would like to have Maddie? Well, now, isn't that just lovely? Well! Uh, Lydia, what... Oh, I broke a plate. Will you pardon me a moment, please? Theodore, 
Theodore, come here. Yes, Mrs. Kenyon. Where's the mustard? Why, right here, Mrs. Kenyon. Good. Now, give me the oil, the vinegar, the red pepper, and some grated cheese over there. Mrs. Kenyon, may I ask what you are preparing? It's a surprise for a friend of mine. Slap some ham in there, Theodore. Mrs. Kenyon, I, I don't believe the combination... Wait a minute, will... there's something mystic. I know. Uh, do we have any cloves? Cloves? Mrs. Kenyon, cloves? Here you are, Mrs. Van Tyne. This is special for you. Oh, my dear, what is it? I just want you to taste it, that's all. You've never tasted such food in your life. Why, thank you, darling. Matty's inspiration? Matty's and mine. Just try it. Mmm, it looks good. Help! Water! Water! Oh, oh, bring me water! Lydia, what did you do? That's a fine thing at a party. Oh, you can keep your party. I'm going out for a walk. Oh, 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 excuse me. Excuse me. Going somewhere? I'm going out for a walk. Oh, well, would you rather go for a ride? My car's right here. Thank you, no. Say, you look mad. I am mad. Here, yeah, now, take it easy. You shouldn't run away from parties like this, you know. Now, I suppose you just sit in the car until you cool off. Hmm? Thank you. Uh, that's better. Uh, incidentally, who are you? I'm the hostess. Ah, well, I'm your guest. Oh, well, who invited you? Mrs. Van Tyne, I'm an old friend. Oh, I see. I was just on my way in. Say, isn't this your anniversary party? Yes, it is. Go right in and enjoy yourself. Oh, I can't leave a lady in distress. Please, I just want to think by myself. Well, perhaps you could think better if I took you away. Hmm? Right now, I, I want to dig a deep hole and crawl into it. I'm wonderful with a pick and shovel. <laughs> I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> Oh, dear. There's nothing so sad as a wedding anniversary. What? Oh, now I know you. You're the ten-cent store cynic, hmm? You say the opposite of what's printed on greeting cards. Oh, no, not at all. Oh, listen, I'd like it to be wonderful for you. I'd like to see you sitting on a star. Thanks. I'm rooting for you, see? You know, I think I'm glad to meet you. I doubt it. Why? Any woman who's been married for five years doesn't really want to meet me. You just want to play at meeting me. You want to shoot the shoots, nibble on some popcorn, and then run home. <laughs> What's your name? Jim Blake. How do you do, Mr. Blake? I could show you the moon, lady. Make you feel wonderful walking out. Okay, Mr. Blake. Show me the moon. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, Jim! Jim! Where are you going? There's your friend, Mr. Blake. Hi, Myrtle. Jim, just a minute. See you later, Myrtle. Smile. She won't like it, so smile. Oh. Oh, see you later, Myrtle. Two bacon and eggs on white. Well, are you tired? No, I feel wonderful. Have you walked out on parties before? Oh, I make a habit of it. With the right companion. Well, what'll it be, folks? Well, what's the specialty of the house, pal? Hamburger with or without. Hamburger with, please. Oh, but I haven't shown you the moon yet. With. No moon. You, buddy. Hamburger without. Might as well have onions, too, buddy. Two burgers, man. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, I wonder if I've made a mistake. In doing what? In restraining myself from making love to you. Oh, it was nice of you to restrain yourself. Oh, I could very easily have tried. <laughs> sure, and I'd have slapped your face. Ah, that's what I thought. Well, what are you going to do about your future anniversaries? Fight. Oh, no, you won't. You can't lick the 20th century... Not when you're married to it, you can't. You won't fight. You'll drink a little and you'll flirt a little. That sounds nasty. It is. And in time, you'll become like me. Well, there's always somebody like Myrtle to flirt with. Oh, so she's your moonlight. Well, not exactly moonlight. Oh, I've meant to call it off several times. But then I always remember my firm. Collins, Wilkinson, Cohen and Blake. Blake, that's me, see? The firm gets half its business from Myrtle. And that's the story of your life? Until tonight. Well, what are you looking for? Someone like you. I'd pin a goodbye note on Collins, Wilkinson and Cohen's pillow for you. Look, I've got a boat on the sound. A woman can go on that boat, can't she? What kind of a woman? Well, she'd have to have beauty, otherwise I wouldn't want her. And she'd have had unhappiness, otherwise she wouldn't want me. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to feel very sorry for you. And for yourself, too. Oh, no, no. Not for myself. I know what I want. I've always known. Come on, take me home, will you? Lydia, is that you? Where have you been? 
Oh, darling, forgive me. I've be behaved atrociously. That's right, you have. I was furious at Myrtle, so I went off with this man who's a perfect stranger. He, he means nothing to me. I'm not worried about that. I'm so sorry, Tony. I wanted our anniversary to be beautiful. But I made it ugly, I suppose. Well, it's my fault, too. Oh, I, I love you, darling. It's still not too late. It's still our anniversary. Our anniversary's over. This is tomorrow. Well, we can salvage something out of it. You bet we can salvage something. Do you realize you've jeopardized the entire Van Tyne campaign? $150,000 in commissions? But how? Don't you know Blake is the Van Tyne house guest? Yes, but I didn't. What are you handing me all that applesauce for? I'm in a spot. Don't you realize that? I'm sorry. You're sorry. I didn't realize what I was doing. Well, I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to get on that telephone before that female gets into bed. I want this whole mess straightened out before I lose that account. Is that all you're losing? Isn't that enough? I'll get on that phone. I don't know what you're going to say. That's up to you. All right, Tony. And this is the beginning and the end of all that highfalutin, discontented wife business, too. Make it clear that the episode was innocent on your part. I will. Mrs. Van Tyn, please. And also that you're never going to see that man again. Is that clear? Yes, Tony. Good. Mrs. Van Tyn, this is Mrs. Kenyon. I'm calling to tell you I'm, I'm sorry we got back so late. Oh, well, you see, I went for some air and... Oh, it won't happen again, Mrs. Van Tyn. I'm so glad you understand... Thank you. Good night. What did she say? I don't think you have to worry about your commissions. No. Good. And now let's forget the whole thing, shall we? You're sorry and I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Well, I'm tired. Well, let's get some sleep, Lydia. In a moment. Hello? This is Mrs. Kenyon. Would you please send a taxi right away? No, I don't know where I'm going. I'll decide that later. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Claudette Colbert, Ray Milland, and Brian Ahern in Act Two of Skylark. Why, it's Sally. And looking especially well tonight. Thanks, Mr. Ruick. It must be my new hairdo. I'm glad you like my swirl curl. It's gorgeous. Sally, girl with a swirl curl, you have me a whirl. <laughs> well, maybe it is a silly name, but the style's making a hit. It's becoming to most everyone and easy to manage, too. And that's important right now. Women don't have much time for beauty care these days, Mr. Ruick. They're too busy trying to help their country. But they want to look pretty just as much as ever. We men think they're managing to do both very successfully, Sally. Well, Mr. Ruick, a woman knows that if her hair is done becomingly and her skin looks smooth and blossom fresh, she just can't help but look nice. So when she finds a complexion care that's quick and easy and that really works, well... She says, hooray for Lux toilet soap, doesn't she, Sally? <laughs> Indeed she does, Mr. Ruick. To be more specific, women say that daily active lather facials with Lux Soap are a wonderful help in keeping skin smooth and lovely to look at. Sally, uh, I'm sure the ladies in our audience would like to hear more about these quick Lux Beauty facials and how to take one. Well, here's all you do. You pat the creamy active Lux Soap lather lightly in. You rinse with warm water and follow with a dash of cool. Then with a soft towel, you pat your face dry. Takes just a few minutes, but oh, how beautifully fresh your skin looks afterwards. Well, Sally, famous screen stars here in Hollywood say they never neglect these Lux Soap active lather facials. You see, active lather does a thorough job. It removes stale cosmetics and every trace of dust and dirt. But this fine toilet soap is so gentle and mild that it agrees with delicate skin. Why don't you try these Lux Soap beauty facials for 30 days? You'll love the rich lather Lux Soap has. So smooth and creamy, it seems to caress your skin. Your precious complexion deserves the best of care. Do as lovely screen stars do. Use fine white Lux Toilet Soap regularly. Get three cakes tomorrow. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act Two of Skylark, starring Claudette Colbert as Lydia, Ray Milland as Tony, and Brian Ahern as Jim Blake. In an ice-cold rage, Linnea Kenyon left our home and husband. 
In a white-hot temper, her husband has gone out to look for her. His first stop is at the law offices of Collins, Wilkinson, Cohen, and Blake. I want to see Blake. Have you an appointment? No, I haven't, but I want to see Blake. I'm sorry, but Mr. Blake isn't in. Oh, he isn't, huh? You don't mind if I take a look, do you? You come back here. Come back. You, Jim Blake? Uh, if nothing's wrong, I am. Where's my wife? The information clerk is outside. Now, don't get funny. I tried to stop him, Mr. Blake. No, it's all right. Close the door, Miss Hobb. Yes, sir. All right, where is she? Who are you? My name is Kenyon. Oh, Kenyon. Well, how do you do, chum? Sit down. Now, look. My wife is gone, and unless I'm mistaken, you've got plenty to do with it. Where did you go with her last night? Oh, don't ask me that, pal. I wasn't photographing the scenery. Look, are you going to help me or aren't you? Well, what do you want to know? I want to know what you talked about. Pal, she was having a look at the horizon. What horizon? Well, there's only one, chum. She examined it with great care. Oh, she was interested, all right, but she decided to wait until she could get it at a bargain price. <laughs> and she thought maybe it could be done on the installment plan. I don't know what you're talking about. The lady seemed to be unhappy, chum. I wish you wouldn't keep on calling me chum. Well, okay, pal. Anything else? Did she consult you about a divorce? About a divorce? No. Uh, did she consult you? Yes. I got a note this morning. Oh, well, that's a simple matter. How about incompatibility? Very genteel? Incompatibility in my eye. Now, see here, Blake, there's going to be no divorce. Is that clear? She can't prove a thing. Oh, uh, Mr. Blake. Yes, Miss Hobb? Uh, may I speak to you, Mr. Blake? Oh, go right ahead, Miss Hobb. Well, uh, it's rather, I mean... Oh, I see, it's confidential. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Kenyon... Uh... Miss Hobbs, suppose you just whisper it, please. Oh, Mrs. Kenyon is here to see you. Oh, oh, thank you. Um, just, um, just ask Mr. Fontleroy to wait in Mr. Cohen's office for a minute, will you, please? Yes, sir. Sit down, Kenyon. No, I'm going. But before I do, if there's anything else my wife said, I wish you'd be good enough to lay it on the table and stick to the words, leave out the music. Well, let me see. Uh, she didn't like your friends. Oh, she didn't. Well, that's too bad. And did she perhaps suggest that I quit my job? You wouldn't do that, would you? You think I'm crazy? It might help, pal. Tell off the bus. Take your woman by the hand. Climb to the top of a hill. Huh? Look us over, Moon. She's a woman. She's life itself. She makes the grass grow, see? I've got hold of her hand, and I'm not letting it go. Why, she's a skylark. Look, I don't get this. But something tells me I ought to bust you in the nose. No, I don't want to fight with you. No, you're the sort of a guy who doesn't want to face any kind of a showdown. At the moment, I'm only interested in showing you out, pal. And don't call me pal. Okay, chum. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Charlotte? This is Tony Kenyon. Say, is Lydia at your place? Oh, you haven't seen her at all, huh? No, I'm at the ad club. Look, if you hear from her, let me know, will you? Yeah, yes, I, I'm all right. You're going slightly nuts, that's all. Hi, Tony. Any word from Lydia? No, she's disappeared. Now she's probably just gone to a hotel. I've been on the phone ever since yesterday. What happened to her? Oh, it's not so bad, Tony. It's the old story of the neglected wife. Every man has to face it. Just what does she expect you to do anyway? Well, I sort of gathered that if I wanted her back, I'd have to give up my job. Uh, I wish I could help. Oh, what could you do? Well, whenever I get in a jam with Charlotte, I... I lie. You lie? Yeah, sure. It's the safest, most reliable thing a red-blooded husband can do. Ah, uh, yeah, but <clears throat> if I lied about quitting my job, Lydia would see through it in a minute. No, oh, I don't know. You, you could try. There's a call for you, Mr. Kenyon. Oh, can I take it here? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Thanks. Hello? Mr. Kenyon, this is Theodore. Yes, Theodore. What is it? Oh, I'm disobeying Mrs. Kenyon's orders, sir. But I thought I'd like you to know she's home now. Packing. She is? She's going to Reno, sir. Oh. Well, thank you, Theodore. And look, uh, if she tries to leave, stall her, will you? I'll be right there. I'm going to stall her permanently. Wish me luck, George. I'm sorry, Tony, but I don't want to see you again. So now you're going back to that bus we met on. Please don't joke about it. I'm not joking. I'm serious. You know, that bus belongs to me, too. I was once on it, same as you. When I first saw you, I knew just one thing. I wanted to be near you. 
I still want to be near you no matter how much it costs. Oh, don't be silly. You couldn't afford the price and I'd never ask you to pay it. I know where your heart is, in your office. Well, I guess it's too late, but I quit my job this morning. You quit? Yep, but now I feel kind of scared. Tony, Tony, look at me. Oh, I did it. I did it all right. Well, I can't believe my ears. Well, I hardly recognized myself, and I went into the boss's office. Took a lot of nerve, let me tell you. What happened? Well, I, I took a deep breath and busted right in and started talking. Well, what did you say? Well, it happened that the president of Red Wing Cigarettes was there in conference, so I told him off first. How? I simply said they ought to give away gas masks to anybody who smoked his seaweed, and he got pretty sore. Oh, well, I should think he was. Yeah, and then the boss asked me if I'd been drinking, and I said no, but that it was a very good idea. Tony, you didn't. Yes, I did. Then he asked me to take it easy, and I laughed right in his face. <laughs> oh, didn't he get mad? Did he get mad? Why, he was furious. So I said, now listen, take it easy, Baldy, take it easy. Baldy, oh, Tony. <laughs> oh, Tony, did you really do it, honestly? Well, would I say I had? Now, Lydia, we can talk now, can't we, please? Well, I, I guess it wouldn't do any harm. Would you mind if I kissed you first? <laughs> that might not do any harm either. Lydia, how could you ever say I didn't love you? I didn't say you didn't love me. It's only lately you haven't been in love with me. Oh, shut up. <laughs> George? Tony. Say, listen, everything went off great last night. Yeah, she went for the whole thing, hook, line, and sinker. Huh? No, no, no. I told her it would take a couple of weeks to get things cleaned up at the office. So, all right, it'll take a couple of years. Tony! Uh-oh, I gotta hang up. See you later. Good morning, darling. Oh, good morning, sweet. Sleep well? Like a rock. You know, for two cents, I wouldn't go back to that office, not even today. Oh, what's a couple of weeks? We have a whole lifetime ahead of us. Yeah. Well, I think I'll go upstairs and finish dressing. Goodbye, sweet. Bye. Excuse oh. me, madam. Yes, Theodore. Mrs. Van Tyne, madam. Mrs. Van Tyne? I want to see you. Well, good morning, Mrs. Van Tyne. I was just going to have breakfast. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, thanks. Oh, isn't this a lovely morning? I didn't come here to discuss the weather. You didn't? Mr. Blake is very charming, isn't he? Mm, he's quite remarkable. In what way? Oh, I don't know. He, he has a remarkable mind, I think. Are you trying to kid me? What do you mean? I mean that metal stuff. Oh, I see. Well, perhaps it would simplify everything, Mrs. Van Tyne, if I told you I have no intention of seeing Mr. Blake again. Are you trying to imply there's something between Mr. Blake and me? Aren't you? Mrs. Kenyon, I don't think you realize who you're talking to. Oh, what'll you bet I do? Look, what did you come here for, anyway? To tell you exactly what I think about you. You put on a lot of airs for a woman in your position. Just because I've been patient with you, it's gone to your head. Who do you think you are, anyway? A nobody whose husband doesn't make in a year what mine makes in a week. Will you get out of here? Not before I'm ready. I'm giving the order, see? Hands off Jim Blake, or maybe you think it'll be easy for your husband to find another job. Are you threatening to discharge my husband? Just one more crack, and he's through right now. <laughs> oh, aren't you funny? You really believe what you're saying. You won't have to wait long to find out. Do you think for one minute that all the years Tony's put into his work could be tossed aside by a scheming, greedy cow like you? <gasps> He's out. Do you hear? He's fired. Beginning today. I'm beginning to believe you could do it. And it won't do you any good to go to my husband, dearie. You're not his type. So that's business, huh? It's about time you woke up from your beauty sleep. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, Mrs. Van Dyne, for your information... Tony quit yesterday. Uh -huh, that's a hot one. Well, it doesn't matter what you think. I don't even blame you. Well, no. You know, as a matter of fact, I should be grateful to you. But yes, you're Lady Bountiful. You're Santa Claus. Ah, oh, do you know, I actually want to say something sweet to you. Well, go ahead and say it. No. No, I'd better not. It might ruin everything. Goodbye, you tramp. <laughs> What are you talking about? Well, I told you, you're fired. Isn't it marvelous? Will you please tell me what happened? Oh, Tony, she was impossible. I was determined to be nice to that woman if it killed me. Well, give it to me, word for word. Well, she played right into our hands. I, I, I couldn't resist it. I said just exactly the right things to get you fired as of today. Ah. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? Well, yes, that's what I wanted. <laughs> and it doesn't really matter whether you walk out later or she gets you kicked out today, does it? Oh, no, 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 certainly. Oh, darling, we're free. <laughs> right now, this minute, we're yeah. free. 
Can you imagine? Mrs. Kenyon? <laughs> Mrs. Kenyon? Mr. Blake wishes to be announced. Oh, yes, dear. I'll show him in. Sir, he's got a lot of nerve coming here at a town like this. Good morning. Hello, Jim. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Kenyon. Hello. Jim, I wish you'd been here. Why? Because I'm so proud of myself. This morning, Tony had an office, a desk, a telephone, and six weeks of slavery still ahead of him. But with one easy stroke, I wiped it all out. What happened? Well, with Myrtle Van Tyne's angelic help, Tony doesn't have to go back to the office. Myrtle's going to have him fired? Yeah. But you see, he'd already quit. That's the big joke. <laughs> I see. <laughs> it uh, doesn't seem funny to him. Listen, what are you doing here anyway? Oh, I just thought I'd come out. What for? Well, to see us, of course. Oh, no, that's where you're wrong. I came to see my client. Oh, thank you, Jim. I, I don't think I'm going to need your services any longer. That remains to be seen. Oh, yeah? Oh, now, don't be so stuffy, you two. You know, I have a feeling that Jim's going to be our best friend from now on. He doesn't seem to think so. I wish you'd stop referring to me as he. Well, anything I call you seems to be a fiction of you. Yes, what's the matter with you, Tony? Yeah, what's the matter, pal? Say, what is this, a courtroom? Well, why are you so angry? Well, who wouldn't be? That big fathead comes uh, in uh, here. Uh, 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 Tony. So, you quit, eh, chum? Yeah. So that's your story. What do you mean by that? What do you mean? What's going on here? Now, just one more question. Not in my house. Well, an innocent man never minds answering questions. Go ahead, Jim. Ask your question. What's your boss's telephone number, Kenyon? Longacre, 50598. Shall I call, or will you save me the trouble? You get out of here. Wait. You don't have to call, Jim. You were lying to me, weren't you? Yes. You hadn't quit your job? Nope. When you told me about Myrtle, you weren't happy at all. You were hating it, and everything last night was a lie. No. When I said I loved you, I meant it. Are you sure? You shut up. Selling the house... Selling the car. I'd do anything to keep you. But you didn't do anything except lie. All right, I lied. <sighs> Thanks, Jim. I guess I've still got time to catch that train. Lydia, where are you going? To Reno. Lydia! Sorry, pal. Yeah, me too. I knew I should have socked no, you. Oh, pal, easy now. Sorry, chum. Oh. Case of Jenny Carver versus Joseph Carver, decree granted. Mary Hope versus Lawrence Hope, decree granted. Lydia Kenyon versus Tony Kenyon, decree granted. Telegram to James Blake, New York. My ring is in the wishing well. Stop. Meet me 1010 tomorrow. Stop. I'm a Skylark. Signed, Lydia. Good night, Jim. Thanks for bringing me home. Can I come up for a drink? Oh, not in this hotel, mister. You ought to move. Another two weeks in this vault and you'll be going back to your husband. No, no. As far as I'm concerned, Tony's dead, divorced, and buried. Well, I'll feel better when he knows that. Good night, darling. Good night, Jim. Hello. Oh! oh. Kind of late, aren't you? What are you doing in here? Get out. No, thanks. I'm very comfortable. Then I'll call the clerk and have you thrown out. Won't do you any good. I told the man at the desk we didn't want to be disturbed. You see, I told him I was your husband. Oh, very clever. And I showed him some credentials. The most important was a $10 bill. You know, I should learn not to underestimate you, Tony. Yes, that's fatal. You mean it was fatal once. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you're here. Well, now, that's more like it. Yes, I want to be sure there are no hangovers left. And there are none. You know, you sound kind of worried about me. <laughs> well, the only worry I've had about you, Tony, was the fact that I was responsible for losing your job. Oh, I've had many offers. You have? Well, then I have no further worries. Except one. You see, this divorce hasn't meant a thing. I still love you the same as I always did. I'm sorry. You were so right about me. I was whirling around in a vacuum. It's called competition. Are you trying to tell me you've changed? Nope. I've reverted to type. The type you liked on that Fifth Avenue bus. You only think you have. Well, isn't it the same thing? No. So now you'd better get out of here. Well, you were a sucker not to take any alimony. I only wanted my independence, Tony. I'm going back to my old job. Independence? Nobody's independent. No matter where you sit, there's always someone sitting a step higher. Oh, I can see you've changed a lot. 
Well, anyway, I want you to take this. The deed to our summer place on the island. No, I, I, I don't want it. I don't want it. it. Do what you want with it. Give it away. Sell it. It's always more yours than mine anyway. Yes, it was. Let's go up there now. Oh, Johnny, I, are you trying to make me unhappy? If I was sure you meant that, I'd go away. But I still love you, and I can't imagine anything without you. And you can't without me. Tony, I look at you and I see someone I used to know a long time ago. Is that all? That's all. No other feeling? None, whatever. All the little things we had, the little half dreams, the pieces of the future we saw together, etc. I've forgotten them. Even the etc. I envy you. Well, you shouldn't. Tell what are you staring at? You. I think I'm going to kiss you. You are not. Yes, yes, I'm sure I am. No, 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 you... <clears throat> well, no other emotion at all, huh? I, this, this, it's just a habit. It's an involuntary reflex. It, it proves I'm normal. That's the way I like them, normal. Well, I think I'm going to kiss you again, Lydia. No, Tony, no, no. <laughs> Oh, you, you... Well, I'll be leaving now, but you mustn't forget, darling, it takes two to make a divorce, just as it does anything else. Good night. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. In just a few minutes, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Claudette Colbert, Ray Milland, and Brian Ahern, will return in Act Three of Skylark. Meanwhile, here's a busy man answering a late afternoon phone call. Hello? Hi, Dick. I'm fine. Bridge game with the boys? Sounds good, but not tonight. I've got a date with my wife. His wife's birthday celebration, and it's a date that Bill wouldn't miss. He's looking forward to stepping out with someone he still thinks is the prettiest girl in the world. Yet Jane really hasn't much time for beauty care. She's too busy all day taking care of her home and her lively young children. But one outstanding charm she has, and that's beautiful skin. Skin so smooth and soft, it gives her the appearance of beauty and freshness always. Skin that makes Bill think of rose petals. And Jane's much too clever ever to take chances with complexion beauty. She says, One thing I never neglect is my daily active lather facial with Lux soap. It takes just a few minutes. First, I pat the rich, creamy lather lightly in, rinse with warm water, then with cool, and pat with a soft towel to dry. Afterward, when I touch my skin, it feels beautifully soft and smooth. Looks so fresh, too. Yes, no wonder Jane's enthusiastic about this daily Lux soap care. And no wonder her husband says as they're dancing. Gosh, honey, you get prettier with every birthday. Lovely women everywhere, including nine out of ten Hollywood stars, depend on this gentle Lux soap complexion care. Why don't you begin your daily facials with this luxurious beauty soap? Try them for 30 days and see what they'll do to help you keep skin smooth and lovely. Get three cakes of Lux Toilet Soap and begin tomorrow. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. The curtain rises on the third act of Skylark. It's afternoon of the following day. On his terrace, the chipper Mr. Kenyon is basking in the warm sunlight. For the first time in his life, he has no place to go, nothing to do, and he's enjoying it. It seems that Mr. Kenyon is something of a skylark himself. Listen, Tony, do you realize it's three o'clock in the afternoon and you're still in pajamas? Georgie, my boy, I've stepped off that express train. I'm in the woods by a rippling brook and I love it. Don't you envy me? No, but I've got something I really do envy you. I had lunch today with Fred Connors. What's he want? 
Oh, we only want you to be his new advertising and sales manager, that's all. Well, I'm not interested, George. Don't think Lydia would like it. Aren't you staking a little too much on Lydia's coming back? Staking my entire future. Yeah, you're nuts. No, no, I mean it. Lydia's done the greatest thing in the world for me, George. I'm happy. Anyway, I've got another job. Doing what? South America and traveling with the birds. <laughs> you are nuts. Mr. Blake, please. I'll announce myself. But Mr. Blake, if oh, you... Oh, oh, here you are. Well, well, how are you, chum? Where's Lydia? Ah, the information desk is right outside, pal. Now, don't be funny. He didn't say anything funny. Now, look, I received a note from Lydia this morning. <laughs> she said she saw you last night and talked to you. What did you say to her? Oh, don't ask me that, chum. I didn't have a stenographer with me. Where is the island? What island? She said she went up to the island. She had to think. Oh. Oh, the island. Uh, well, now, that's interesting. Where is it? I don't know, chum. Lots of islands. Staten Island, Governor's Island, Coney Island. The Thousand Islands. Oh, keep quiet. <laughs> I was only trying to be helpful. Well, I think I'll go up and get dressed. Goodbye, chum. Oh, I'm not leaving. I'm sticking right with you, see? Whither thou goest, thither me. All right. And I'll find that island, see? And I'm going up there to talk some sense into her. Fine, chum. And stop calling me chum. Okay, pal. <laughs> Jim, why did you come up here? Came to get an answer to a simple question. Must it be yes or no? I'm afraid so. Lydia, are you going to take him back? I don't know. You can't keep running away from him forever, you know. It's so difficult to erase five years from your memory overnight. Don't you see? Everything I look at, it, it's us, Tony and me. This is our island. That's the boathouse he built. It's still not finished, but his intentions were good. Well, what do you propose doing? I'll handle it somehow. Lydia, why don't we go away? Look, I've got my boat coming up here. She'll be here in the morning. But we'd only be running away. Yes, but we'd be running away to get married. Why, we could be off the mainland by noon, and I could put notes in little bottles to Collins, Wilkinson, and Cohen to tell them that we won't be back. Nice work, chum. Nice work. Tony, where are you? Up here on the boathouse. What are you doing up there? Eavesdropping, chum. Look out, I'm coming down. Now, watch out for that loose board. Oh, have no fear, my sweet. I'm as sure put it as a mountain goat. Well, I can climb down. Tony! Oh. Tony! Tony, are you all right? Oh, a mountain goat. He's a goat, all right. Tony, look at me. Oh, Jim, carry him up to the house. What, that big lug? Oh, but Jim, he may be seriously hurt. Well, carry him, oh, please. Oh, all right, all right. Come on, goat, put your arm up here. <laughs> darling, Lydia, hey, darling. Hey, cut that out. Oh, Jim, be careful. He's delirious. I love you, darling, I Will love you. Will you stop that? He's pinching my arm. Oh, Jim, this is no time to be funny. Listen, Lydia, this guy is faking. He's not delirious. Of course he is. He thinks you're me. Well, does he pinch you until you bleed? Darling. Ow! <laughs> Jim, we've got to do something to bring him to. Maybe some water will do it. Well, there's a whole ocean full of it. Here you go, and good luck, pal. Hey! Well, what goes, Lydia? Is he going to stay up here tonight? It looks like it. Well, if he does, so do I. You know, maybe he thinks he's protecting me. At heart, Tony's very conventional, and of course he thinks I'm perfect. If he didn't think so, he... hmm? oh, what? I, I think I can fix it so he'll let me alone, but for good. How? It's like I said, Jim. Tony's a very conventional person. Tony, open the door. Hello. Couldn't you sleep? No, I couldn't. Me either. May I come in? Sure. I want to talk to you anyway. As a matter of fact, I want to talk to you, too. Lock the door, Tony. Huh? Why? Oh, well, Jim's kind of fussy, you know. He's terribly jealous. Huh. Jealous? Mm-hmm. Why? Oh, Tony, don't be so naive. I think I'll leave it unlocked. Oh, all right. Now, what do you want to talk to me about, darling, hmm? Well, I... Hey, what's the matter with you? Well, nothing. Why, darling? I don't know. Well, anyway, darling, I have a swell job in South America, and I want you to go with me. Well, maybe if I have the time, I will. If you have the time, what do you mean? I want you to go as my wife. Oh, that isn't necessary, Tony. Huh? 
Well, I could pose as your wife. It'll only be for a month or so. Lydia, are you out of your head? Oh, no, but after all, I do owe you something. You know, in your time, you spent a lot of money and attention on me, and in all honesty, I, I feel you're entitled to something. Kiss me, Tony. Hey. Hey, stop that. No, no, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Now, oh, Tony, darling. Lydia, what's come over you? Oh, nothing. I am just feeling grateful, that's all. You, you opened my eyes last night. Come over here, honey. No. I prefer to remain where I am. If you can behave decently, would you mind telling me what's gotten into you? I want to make you happy. I'll go to South America with you for two months if you want. Lydia, go and sit down. Tony, darling. Stop chasing me. Oh, Tony. Listen, go away. Oh. Tony, are you hurt? No. No, I'm all right. Say, listen, what's going on? What's the matter, darling? Well, you, you've changed. You never acted like this. You never really knew me. I guess I didn't. All right, Lydia, you win. I win? Yes. I don't care what anyone thinks. Right or wrong, I'm going to do it your way. Huh? Sure, we're strong. We can defy convention. Now, Tony, wait a minute. Kiss me, Lydia. Tony, take it easy. Oh, darling, kiss me. No, no, stop. I love you. No, no, stop chasing me. I don't me. care. Tony, stop. You're let me alone. Darling. You let her alone. Jim. Let her alone, do you hear? Get out of here. This doesn't concern you. Get away from me. What is this? I'll tell you what it is. She was trying to let you down easy, see? What do you mean by that? She was trying to make you go away. Then all this, Lydia? Yes. Oh, I get it. Oh, can't you see you're in the way? Now, why don't you be a good sport and stop annoying her, huh? Quit all this fooling around and get out. Particularly as Lydia and I are going away on my boat tomorrow. Is that what you want? Yes. Okay. Good luck, Lydia. How do you like it, Lydia? I love it. You ever been sailing before? No, it's glorious. <laughs> You know, once again, I'm wondering if I was right. In doing what? In forcing the issue last night when you were upset. Why, I practically made you say what I wanted to hear. I wouldn't have said it if I hadn't meant it. Say, we're going to have a bit of a blow. What? I think we're going to have a storm. What do you mean, going to have? <laughs> Oh, blow the man down, ball is knocking right down the way. Hey, blow the man down. Yeah, da 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 bum bum. Hiya, Lydia. Lydia, how do you feel? Huh? Oh, blow, I'm fine. As a girl, while you have your sea legs in no time. You know, it's like getting used to horseback riding again. Yeah, I've never been horseback riding. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey! Whoa, whoa, get up there. Why? What happened? I fell off my horse. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Lydia, come on, sing. What? Sing. That'll fix you up. I, I don't think so. Ah, sure it will. <laughs> oh, blow the man down, ball is. Come on, come on. <laughs> Oh, blow the man. Blow, blow the man. Oh, that's a girl. <laughs> oh, knock him right down. Way, hey, blow the man down. Way, hey, blow the... Oh. oh, blow the man down, bull is knock him right down. Oh, give me some time to blow oh. the man oh. down. Jim, listen. Was I was a walking down Paradise oh. Street. Jim, I don't Way, feel good. Hey, blow the man down. Jim, da, da, please. Da, 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 da. Oh, Jim, please hey. stop it. Hey, what's the matter? I want to go home. Take me home. Oh, don't me. Thanks, Jim, and goodbye. This is it, huh? You know, he'll jip you all over again. Maybe, maybe he will. You had the moon, you know, but you're trading it in for an apron and a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> no, 
I need him, Jim. Uh-huh. Well, I'm still jealous, see? And don't you think I won't be back? Probably on your 10th anniversary. <laughs> You'll really be needing legal advice no. then. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks and all the luck. Oh, Tony has it all. So long. Mrs. Kenyon, welcome home. Thank you, Theodore. Where's Mr. Kenyon? Why, uh, he's gone, madam. Just a little while ago. Gone where? I don't know, madam. He said something about Pier 36, madam. Oh. I'm sorry, madam. Oh, but I've got to stop him. Theodore, get me a taxi, quick. <laughs> What in the world? Oh, oh, Tony, I'm back. Oh, darling. Don't ever let me go again. Never, never, Tony. Darling, oh, sweet. Oh, come on, we've got to rush. Tony. Don't stop to talk. We'll be married on the boat. Oh, but darling, listen. Come I... on, come on. No, darling. I... Listen, I know what's good for you. A boat trip, salt water. You need it. Come on. Oh, Tony, darling. <laughs> When a play involves Claudette Colbert, Ray Moland, and Brian Ahern, we can be sure of one thing, good acting. And that always deserves a curtain call. Thank you, C.B. It certainly seems natural to be working for you again. You know, I had to come here to discover that you can work in a DeMille production entirely on dry land. <laughs> you see, in Reap the Wild Wind, there was a hurricane, a fight, a wreck, somebody falling overboard every day. What do you do for exercise in between? Well, that's no joke, Brian. I've been in several of those quiet pictures of CBs. No, I didn't mind that, but it was awkward acting in a diving suit that weighed 175 pounds. I thought you were quite graceful, Ray. <laughs> Tell me, C.B., aren't beginners usually a little shaky the first time they go down for a dive? Yes, they are. When Ray'd been underwater about 15 minutes and called up to me on his helmet telephone, I was sure he'd had enough. Well, that's a long stretch underwater. <laughs> oh, Ray wasn't frightened. All he wanted was a drink of water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and C.B. had to send out for it. Claudette, I hear you're starting a picture at Paramount very soon. Mm-hmm. Preston Sturgis is directing. I'm really looking forward to it because I thought his Sullivan's Travels was one of the outstanding pictures of the year. Preston Sturgis is one of the outstanding directors of the year. Well, when one great director praises another, that's news, C.B. Mm -hmm. Now, what I have to say about Lux Soap may not be news because I've been saying it for years, but it's always worth repeating. I think Lux Soap is a grand complexion care, and I use it all the time. From you, Claudette? That gives Lux Soap the blue ribbon. Well, what are you going to have next week, C.B.? A roaring drama of New York, Brian. The Warner Brothers hit picture, City for Conquest. And our stars will be Alice Faye and Robert Preston. It's the story of a boy and girl who see the big town as a challenge. Something to be beaten by courage and strength. But they discover that love has something to do with it, too before New York becomes their city for conquest. I know your audience will enjoy it, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Stars like you are the spice of a producer's life. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents... Alice Fay and Robert Preston in City for Conquest. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Cornette Colbert's services tonight have been donated to the Red Cross. She is currently making the Paramount picture Palm Beach Story and Ray Milland will soon be seen in Paramount's The Lady Has Plans. The Paramount picture, Skylark, was produced and directed by Mark Sandwich. Heard in tonight's play were Wally Mayer as George, Thomas Mills as Theodore, Tori Carlton as Myrtle, and Leo Cleary, Dick Elliott, Edward Marr, and Doris Cederholm. Tune in next Monday night to hear Alice Fay and Robert Preston in City for Conquest. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. 
And your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.